Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we'll be going through the Configuring Tap Interfaces SRX Learning Byte. All right, so here's our example. Let's jump right into this. And first I want to point out the topology. We have three different devices, SRX1, EX1, and VSRX1. Now, SRX1 acts as the perimeter firewall and EX1 acts as the access switch. Now, VSRX1 is connecting to EX1, and we want to configure VSRX1 in tap mode because EX1 is sending port mirrored traffic towards VSRX1, and that'll be received on VSRX1's GIGI004 interface. Now, I've already done a learning byte that talks about the configuration for port mirroring on EX1, so if you're interested in that, please go check that out. All right, so with this, we need to do a few things. As I mentioned earlier, port mirroring is already configured on EX1, so we don't need to worry about that. It's configured and working, but we need to configure VSRX1. We're going to have to configure promiscuous mode for the interface and then tap mode in the forwarding options for that interface. Then we need to configure our security zone to put that interface in, a routing instance to contain the interface, and then we need to configure security policy as well. And lastly, and this is outside of the VSRX, we need to configure the vSwitch. Since this is a VSRX, it is virtualized, and so it is running on a hypervisor. And this is running on ESXi, I think it's 6.5, maybe 6.0, but either way, it is running on ESXi, so we need to go into that into the vSphere client, and we need to enable promiscuous mode on the vSwitch itself. So one thing to keep in mind here is that we are using a new type of configuration to configure tap mode with VSRX1. Now this new type of configuration came out in 20.2R2 and 20.3R1, so basically anything after 20.3R1, you'll be able to have this new configuration, and it's very simplified. How we had to configure tap mode before this is incredibly complicated and difficult and error prone. So they, they fixed that. So keep that in mind. We're using the new way to do it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So here is the ESXi web interface. Let's go ahead and configure that vSwitch for promiscuous mode. And then select the vSwitch, which in this case is called span. And then we need to select edit settings and then expand the security section. And we see promiscuous mode is currently set to reject. We need to set that to accept, click save. And great, so we're done there. So we need to jump to the VSRX1 CLI and get that part of this going. All right, here is the CLI for VSRX1. Jump into configuration mode. And let's go to security forwarding options. We set the mode to tap, and we have to specify the interface we want to use, and that's gonna be GIGI004. Then let's edit the interface's GIGI004. We need to set that to promiscuous mode. And then we also need to set the family that we're going to be receiving traffic with. In this situation, it's just going to be IPv4 traffic, so setting the family INET on this interface is all we need to do. Then we need to configure security zone, we're going to call this tap, and we set the interface GIGI004 in this zone. And then next we want to configure a routing instance. We'll just call this routing instance tap instance. And this part is optional, but highly recommended, uh, because if you don't put it in its own routing instance, then the traffic could technically make it off VSRX1. And with port mirror traffic, you don't want that. So we just set the interface GIGI0 slash 0 slash 4 by not setting the instance type. This by default becomes a forwarding instance, which is fine with what we're trying to do. Then let's configure the security policy. And we're going to set this from zone tap to zone tap because traffic is just going to be coming in and going out of this interface that is in the tap zone, the GIGI004 interface. And then we need to name the policy. We'll call this tap inspect. And then we need to set some matching parameters. Just going to set a source address of any destination address, any application layer four information, any, and then layer seven information, we're gonna to set to any as well. And then we're just gonna say set then permit. Now, something to keep in mind here is, as we talked about earlier, why would you do this? Well, 
you can do this with adaptive threat profiling. And at this point, we would then configure adaptive threat profiling, but we're not going to do that in this learning byte because it'd be way too much to include in a single learning byte. And so please look for the other learning byte that I do plan on doing that will cover configuring adaptive threat profiling. So let's go ahead and commit that configuration and quit. All right, so right now I do have hosts that are connected to EX1 that are sending traffic. And so EX1 should be already port mirroring that traffic and we should be receiving it. And how we can check that is we can do the show security flow session and it's just a bunch of ICMP traffic. In a real network, it would be other types of traffic, but ICMP traffic works well in the lab to test things like this. So we're just going to specify ICMP. And you see here, yes, we have lots of traffic coming in. I'm just going to kill that output so we don't just keep getting the same output over and over. And so here we can see that traffic is being sent from a host 10.10.10.103 going to 8.8.8. .8 and it is coming in interface giggy 004 and going out interface giggy 004. And that might seem a little strange right there. Why is it coming in and going out the same interface? Well, that's the behavior of a tap interface. And the reason why it's doing that is because with an SRX device, if we were using something like adaptive threat profiling, we need to see both wings of the session. And so here is how we do that. We see it come in and then we send it out. And so the VSRX device here is able to see that and act upon it with that information. And so you can see here, yes, we do have a tap mode interface setup and it is working correctly on VSRX1. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure tap mode for SRX devices. And then we demonstrated how to verify that tap mode is actually working on SRX devices. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.